Hey there, Chris Rayo, home aficionado, coming at you live today from inside my house. I'm here with my special guest, uh, Mike Milham of Housemaster at Home Inspections. And uh, how are you, Mike? Doing great. Thanks Doing for good. having me. I'm glad we're inside right now because uh, the reason why I invited Mike over to my house uh, today, it's February 4th and it is cold. Like, really cold. It is, according to Google, negative six degrees outside. Uh, and according to my thermostat, it actually it just lost a degree. Uh, it's 76, uh, not 76, 67. 67 inside. And what, what I'm trying to do today is figure out how inefficient uh, with heat my house is. And Mike has a exceptional tool to tell us uh, a little bit about that. Mike, what do you got today? Uh, so I got a thermal imaging camera. Um, it's a great backup and support tool um, for our brains. So in our experience, we're trying to look for heat loss. That's our big focus. Openings, uh, poor insulation, things like that. Any areas you can seal. What this does is it gives you a very clear picture in terms of a gradient, a variance in the temperatures, hot to cold. And then what you do is you use it to get up close and you look at specific temperatures to kind of back up what you're seeing with your head and then what you're seeing with some of the colors on here. It's uh, just one tool in our tool belt. Very yeah. helpful. It's very helpful, and I also know from previous home inspections with Mike, it also can sometimes point out moisture and leaks uh, that aren't actually visible to the eye yet, so it's really cool for something like that. That's why it's one of the reasons why he uses it for his home inspections. But with the temperature gradient that we have out there today, it's gonna show me where the cold spots in my house are, and I'm excited to see where I need to add some insulation so I'm not just losing money out the door. So uh, let's jump into it. Yeah. And so what are we looking at here, Mike? Yeah, so we're looking at this uh, window. We got an older window. This mm -hmm. is actually a double pane, but you're seeing they're getting a big draft around the perimeter of the actual window itself. So the air is actually, the heat is actually escaping down below and outside right there. So you can see we're getting numbers, maybe hard to tell on camera, but we're getting numbers all the way down to like eight degrees oh my goodness. right here. Unbelievable. Where as inside, you come back to the walls, I mean, we're all the way back up into the 60s. So a massive difference right there, the big draft. So that's where I feel like coolness near a window or something like that. It's Absolutely, like you're physically going to feel a draft right there, for yeah. sure. And then if we kind of peel back a little bit, you can see a little bit of a difference here on the surface of the window. We're getting around mid 50s yeah. around that surface. Um, but if we go back to a single pane, turn this back on here. So mid fifties there, we get over to a single pane window. Scoot back over here. We're gonna get temperatures down into the thirties. Yeah, so it's so considerably this single, cooler. This is a single pane. I do have a storm window on the outside here. Yep. Uh, but as you can see, I've got the screen in as opposed to the full storm uh, with the with the, with the glass, uh, so there's really just this single plane of glass that is providing you know protection from the outside, whether it be rain, water, sunlight, uh, you know thermal, everything. That's what's doing it for, you know that single pane of glass that's been installed for I don't know yeah 50, 60 years, something like that. I want to point out one other thing here. So we were talking about the draft going out the perimeter of the window, actually going below the window frame and outside. Yep. And we we're getting, again, temperatures down as low as eight degrees. Wow. If you look at the same style of window right to the left of it, but it's a picture window, meaning it's not meant to be operated. So around that perimeter at that base, we're getting temperatures still cool, but they're in the forties. So considerably warmer. And that's just simply because it's sealed off. So the difference between right here where it's not sealed because it's operable, versus right here where it is actually sealed because it's not being operated. Massive difference with just adding some sealant around the perimeter of that to help yeah. limit the draft. I'm curious, you want to, you want to go up to the pane itself too? Because this one has the, the storm window, but it's the full piece of glass on the other side. Do yeah, you see a big so full, yeah absolutely. We're up almost, yeah, we're getting into around 50 degrees right there on that surface very, versus here, we're getting all the way down into the 30s. Yeah. Yeah. Get down below. Oh, look at that. You can see my heat reflection <laughs> in the window. Absolutely. That's wild. It's ghostly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm checking out the, the front door. And once again, you can see a big gradient in terms of color. The door itself has a surface temperature around 60, but there's definitely some air leakage 
some heat loss around the perimeter, around the corners. We're getting a draft. So as we get a little closer, let's see what kind of temperatures we get here. Oh, we're getting all the way down to the teens right around there. So we're definitely getting some good heat loss there. Not what we want. But the nice thing is we got real easy fixes for that. You can, just a simple sweep, adding some weather stripping, simple things like that. Things you can get over at Home Depot or your Lowe's, your, your local big box store. Go a long, long way to kind of protecting that and cutting down on that heat loss. Okay, now what I want to check out is um, outlets. So outlets, devices, anything like that as electrical devices um, at a perimeter wall, you can get a lot of heat loss on those too. So as we come up to an outlet right here, we can definitely see the gradient right here at this outlet. And as I get a little closer, and this gets a little tricky as we get in there, but we are getting down into the mid to lower 50s if I can control it just right. And what that's showing us is again, we're getting a little heat loss. And again, very easy fixes in this area. Um, you could pull those covers off. Always kill your electricity first. Shut that off just to be safe um, for sure. But then what you can do is around the perimeter of those boxes, you can just do a little bit of like spray, spray foam. foam. Like and the great stuff. You got it. Stuff. Exactly. Yeah, just be okay. careful of the expanding stuff. Right. Because it can okay. be, it can push a little bit. Yeah. Um, so try to cut down on that. Try the non-expanding in those areas. Mm -hmm. And then they also make little insulation covers for those. So before you put your oh. faceplate back on, you can just put one of those covers on there and you'd be amazed at what a difference just those so simple that does items. a little bit of air sealing for that individual outlet. Absolutely. And, and cuts down on the draft. Absolutely. It goes a long, long way. Great tips. There we go. So Mike, one of the things that I've always noticed when I, when I've operated these switches and I can feel it right now, even though I have an air vent right below this, I, I can feel a cold draft coming from some of the spots in between. And I think I know what causes it. Um, but what are you getting for readings on, on this light switch? So this is one of my main ones. I touch this one pretty much every day when I turn my kitchen lights on. Yeah. So if I go around the wall around that area, we're looking at mid sixties on the surface. Yeah. But as we get down into that bank of switches right there, yeah. we are getting, them, right? yeah, we're getting down into the thirties and forties. Yeah. Yep. 37. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. Cool. The outside's coming in uh, on that one. And I'm pretty sure I know what it is. On the outside here, which we'll cut to in a sec, but there, I'm pretty sure you, there used to be about an uh, inch, uh, inch uh, 12 by 12 uh, exterior fan okay. going through this common wall. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's the cause of it. Um, yeah, let's take a peek because what can definitely happen is we're, this is all about airflow, mm -hmm. heat loss. So if you have a place for it to exit, that's definitely gonna increase that airflow versus if it doesn't have a place to exit, it's gonna be more stagnant and just kind of hold. Yeah. But here, it sounds like we have an opportunity for that air to just escape out. So let's go take a peek. I want a coat. Do you want a coat? Good. Think I'm right. outside. Oh, there we have it. Yep, absolutely. So. so yeah, so like air is coming in or out of that. That used to be a fan of some type, um, you know, probably for venting the kitchen back in the day when the house was originally built. That's yeah. what, you know, straight to the outside is, yeah. is, is what they did there. Yep, and maybe maybe insulated a little bit, but probably wasn't sealed real well. Yeah. Plus we're just looking at some plywood with no outer insulation on it for mm -hmm. sure. All right, Chris, just another area that I notice is right at your yeah. front entryway. Okay. We got some blue spots here for sure. Let me get a good shot. You can kind of see the yeah. camera there has a, yeah. Yeah, it's a couple of blue spots, like, and that's, that's picking up the ceiling, yeah. not an exterior wall. Right, so this is all interior space. Granted, it is close to the exterior, yeah. especially out towards the corners where you get yeah, to the- I got a couple of big blue dots there. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like we're missing some insulation up in that area and we've got a little bit of heat loss going. So it, it doesn't get bitter cold like some of the other exterior areas we saw because it does mm -hmm. cut down an airflow a little bit, but definitely got some slow heat loss. So we're going from surface temperature in the mid 60s, yep, over here, all the way down into the mid low 50s. For over there. Yeah, in those well, areas. I do have access to that. That's a, that's, this is the eve for my Cape house. And so like there's a knee wall that I can, like that, that is an area that I, I can get access to for, for taking a look at. Okay, very good. 
So, Mike, I think my house is talking to me a little bit. Um, you know, I, I do pay attention to uh, walls and, and ceilings and around toilets and things like that for leaks. This, I haven't really been able to find a, a leak at, but I've got some delamination of my ceiling up here, which, as you can see, yeah, you can see sort of the, the bubbliness and the outline of it uh, there. Um, and it's kind of been there since since I moved in, did the renovation, um, but it's gotten progressively a little bit worse. Um, you know, any ideas what might that be from? Yeah, so first of all, that's great thinking on your part. Uh, your walls and ceilings can definitely tell a story in terms of moisture, condensation, mm -hmm. any of that kind of stuff. So we, we should definitely check up into the ag and see what we got going on for any leaks and moisture penetration or any lack of insulation, anything like that, for sure. Let's go take a peek. Okay. All right, so here we are, Chris, directly above where we saw the evidence of moisture in the ceiling that you're pointing out and noticing. Um, this is a seam between the drywall at that wall right there. The drywall itself is a little bit soft around there, showing me some signs of moisture in the past. So I look down the line a little bit, you can actually see a little bit of moisture staining in that area. Then I look up above and we have the plumbing stack, the vent, going up through the roof and that area is it's actually covered in frost right over the boot oh yeah so for that's sure true. yeah so what that's telling me is if you look in this whole area there's just just about no insulation there's none in that um, ceiling joist bay some of the lateral ones do but this one has no insulation at all so that's where we're definitely gonna have heat loss okay. it's gonna hit the cold air up on the roof of that boot it's going to instantly condense, creating moisture from the humidity in the air, and then it's so cold that it just freezes, and that's where we get the frost from. Wow. If we look around, we actually see it on the nails, too. The roofing nails also have frost on them as that's, well. That's all just from, like, not having insulation. Yeah, so and that heat loss, you got it. Temperature Absolutely. Now, of course, you can still get um, moisture penetration around that plumbing boot, mm -hmm. for sure. That can happen. Um, but right now we're currently seeing moisture in the in the form of frost right up in that boot, and that's that's going to be directly related to the the lack of insulation in that area. Okay. All right, so I'm heading back into the attic, take a closer look. One thing you can see here, as you look, perfect example of actual heat loss. As you can see the moving insulation. That's oh, that's wow. the actual draft going, for sure. Yeah. So I'm going to take a peek around. This is a little more pronounced because I've got the hatch wide open, of course. But I'm going to take a peek around just to see how we're looking otherwise for insulation throughout the attic. So over on this side, where you did some finishing, there's actually a decent amount of insulation. Okay. You could always lay it out a little bit better so there's no gaps, things like that. Mm -hmm. but, but overall, there's a decent amount of insulation at first look. Go around to the other side tell you what I'm gonna pull out a flashlight just to make sure we can see okay and there's definitely a lack of insulation looks like there was some Let me brighten this up a little bit there was some insulation but it has really all disintegrated just kind of deteriorated over time yeah. so we really just don't have it so in that whole side of the house definitely getting a lot of heat loss if you look actually all that's left is the old paper just the old, the old vapor barrier paper, that's it. yeah Everything that's it oh yeah so definitely something to attack is getting a little more insulation up here you'd be surprised how how uh, far that goes in terms of holding on to the heat in your home quick question Mike. so we were just discussing uh chris that there was insulation on this side yeah around here and all in this area so now we're going to take a close look at the surface ceiling surface temperatures we're looking around 71 72 degrees okay we've gotten so pr pretty decent not too bad at all Yep. But then as we go to the side that the did not have the insulation. Like, yeah, this we, is the stuff where it disintegrated, right? Yeah. This is my 50 to 60 year old insulation. Over right. Here. So, I mean, we're getting down to 60 degrees. Wow. Some areas we've gotten even cooler, even blow into the 50s. Yeah. And so that's just because this stuff is just, it's just not doing its job anymore. It's right. Like, it's just, being, you know, disintegrated yeah. over time. So the good news is it is, you know, you have some good drywall, some mm -hmm. wallboard over the ceiling and plaster. So it's sealed up pretty well. So it slows down the airflow, yeah. but definitely you're still getting a lot of heat loss slowly permeating its way out.
for sure. So insulation uh, clearly plays a big difference. Down to 58 now. Wow. Right there. So definitely dropping. Yeah. 57. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You can see my studs. <laughs> see the roof rafters. Yep. There you That's go. That's what those are. The lines. Cool. Very good. Okay, so right now we're in the front of the house toward the area where the front entry was. And we're in that renovated side on the second floor. That renovated side um, where you finished out. And you can see there's insulation all along that exterior wall into the eave attic space. So that's doing a really nice job of holding the heat in. Again, they got the vapor barrier towards the warm side. So we're seeing the exposed fiberglass insulation. So that looks good. And then if we go over to the older part, this is right at the front entryway. It's a little tight, but you can see this wall right here, no insulation at all. That's where we were seeing that cold spot, Chris. We saw like a good 15 degree drop in that area. So you can see no insulation. So that heat is just trying to escape right out into this Eve attic space, which is down in the 30s. So it's a chilly space. So adding some insulation like we saw on the other side would definitely go a long, long way. Mike, what's that silver stuff that I see coming off the rafters? What's that? <laughs> that's that's the old insulation. That's the old paper backer for the old insulation. That's what's left, right? Yeah, that's all that's, that's left of it. After 50 to 60, 70 years. <laughs> so wow. it deteriorates. Yeah, so it, it needs to be addressed at this point for sure. But yeah, definitely hitting any of those exterior walls with some insulation would go a long, long way. Hey, Mike. Uh, so one of my favorite things about home inspectors, they will crawl into the dark and scary places that I don't want to go. <laughs> Great job. So Mike, here we are down in my basement and um, we're by my washer dryer and I actually keep a little thermometer. It's made for, I think, refrigerators, uh, but I keep it down here. And as you can see, it's about showing about 50 degrees right now and I do that because you know I've got plumbing on this exterior wall which I do try and insulate uh, but I noticed that definitely my basement's colder um, and usually that thermometer hovers around I get about a 10 degree gradient difference um, so usually it's about 60 degrees but you know what are you seeing uh, with your camera here yeah absolutely um, yeah, so down here, so naturally, typically basements are going to be below grade. Yep. So you're naturally going to be more temperate. You're going to be sitting around in the 50s. Just okay. by na naturally, pretty much all year round. It'll vary, of course, you know, as the gets warm in the summer, or really cool in the, uh, the wintertime. Um, but here at your house is a little bit different situation. You have basically a walkout basement. Yeah. So which means you're talking about all this foundation wall being exposed to the exterior. So that's where you're going to get more heat loss versus just going out into the ground where it's below grade. So if we look right now at this area, do a little close up of the surface temperature of the foundation wall, we're getting all the way 26 down to 25 degrees on this surface. This is back on the walk outside the rear of yeah. your basement. Now we go to the front over here where most of this is below grade. Just surface temperature, even though we're in the same, only a little ways apart. We're getting all the way to upper 40s. I even had up to 50 at one point surface temperature as we get down a little lower. can increase. Yeah, there we go, down into the 50s. Okay, so definitely we see how that heat loss happens. Now, there's definitely solutions for that. Okay. I want to show you one other thing while we're talking about it here. So back to the rear again. As we look out at the rim joist which is all this area along here yeah all this area up in that Above location the pipe. yeah okay. exactly so we have some areas that have insulation so right there we've got a little insulation yeah and we are getting surface temperatures in the low 50s yeah perfect and then we go over to here where we don't have any insulation we've had temperatures all the way down into the 30s as low as like 36, 35 in some locations. Wow. Okay, so you see the difference in the insulation. So now, some great options for you in those areas is foam board. And there's different types of foam board, but okay. what you can do is you can actually cut foam board to fit into that space. Into so, that square. And you were saying something about foam board. So like, as opposed to doing the pink insulation here, maybe better to do a piece of rigid foam board. Exactly, so per inch, 
It's yeah. not quite, but it's it's nearly double the insulation value. Okay. So per inch versus the fiberglass. It's very easy to work with. You cut it yep. into the rectangle shape to fit in there. Now it's not gonna be perfect, it's not gonna be sealed around the edges. We wanna cut down an airflow. So okay. what you're gonna do is around the perimeter of that foam board, when it fits in each one of those cavities and inside each one of those joist bays, yep. is you're gonna go ahead and actually seal around the perimeter with some of that expanding foam, which you have some of right around here, around the window. Yeah, when I have my really windows redone. Yeah. Which my windows were bad. They were very gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. These are double so, panes. Definitely yeah. much better. Here's a perfect example of surface temperature about 34 yeah. right in that area, which is already warmer than just our concrete. And just my concrete. Yeah. Wow, which is 25 better. right there. And that's 10 inches of concrete versus <laughs> less, like an inch and a half of window. Right. And then you can even improve that concrete though with um, foam board, just like in all the, the joist bays at the rim joist, you could put yep. foam board on all this. It's yep. a glue on material. And like I said, they have different options. I I have Works some. really well. So Mike, I actually have some insulation in my house because I do try to keep up with this sometimes, but I've got some foam board rigid stuff, which, you know, it's very lightweight. Um, but like, tell me the difference between the two of these. Yeah. So this is your traditional fiberglass insulation. Um, this is your foam board insulation. Um, this is good stuff. This is stuff is great right here. The reality is this, your fiberglass insulation per inch is going to be about an R5 or excuse me, an R3.5. Whereas this stuff right here, you can get in close to it. You can see per inch is about a 6.5. So not quite double, but holy smokes, what a huge improvement and very easy stuff to work with. Yeah, so I should be using this on my rim joists and then spray foaming or, you know, foaming around it. Exactly. That really is good airtight and, and amazing. And, and Great product. Safe. Very easy to work with. Cool. So Mike, one of the problem areas that I knew about was kind of by my electrical and by my uh, cable input. Um, and you know, this area, if you can see that where that little insulation was, that's my fiber optic cable feed. Like that was not sealed at all from the outside. Um, and you know, I had a big draft coming in there and this area was very cold. Uh, before I did a little bit of silicone and uh, obviously I shoved some pink stuff and into the hole there as well But like what what should people what can people do? Uh, for like the penetrations coming from the house. Yeah, exactly what you just said So just think of any of those little openings any of those exterior holes penetrations That are getting out there allowing heat to to escape out you want to do your best to seal them and then insulate around those areas. So you talked about cable entry. Yeah. Um, be always be careful and work with a professional, but even like electrical entry, yep. um, areas like that. And then even along these areas, so your sill plates, you'd be shocked at how much heat loss there is along those sill plates. You can actually spray foam between those two joints. Oh really? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then uh, moving along, so even uh, penetrations like an exterior faucet. So we get the plumbing going out. The yep. exterior faucet right there, definitely at that opening, gonna get heat loss, so you wanna seal and insulate around those. You get the oil fill and vent area mm -hmm. right here. Again, penetrations, openings to the exterior. All those areas are definitely spots you wanna be hitting because you can definitely get heat loss. So you've done a really nice job, I see, with insulation around that oil fill and vent. Definitely off to a great start. Well, thanks, Mike. We're back in my kitchen. We're a little bit dirtier. Uh, appreciate you crawling through some attic spaces with me today to find out some of the problem areas uh, regarding insulation with my house. Uh, we do want to make a disclosure uh, that this isn't uh, a normal home inspection. We were highlighting some of the tools that Mike uses and, you know, better yet, why don't you tell him more so uh, what you do when you do a home inspection? Yeah, so just uh, real clear here. Um, a thermal camera is just one tool in the toolbox for mm -hmm. an inspection. We're not doing a full thermal scan every time that we um, do a home inspection. Uh, we just use it to kind of check out some problem areas. Again, energy differences and temperature is the number one thing that it does. Right. Today was a perfect day because we had very cold exterior temperatures. Super and, cold. And of course, his heat's working, so we have nice, cozy, warm temperatures on the interior. Um, our, our full inspection, what that does cover is uh, from the roof all the way down to the foundation. We're mm -hmm. starting on the exterior 
we look at a lot of things, big focus is gonna be in moisture. It's a big part of our issues out here in New England. Um, on the inside, we start with the attic and we work our way all the way down to the foundation. We're gonna look at mechanical, electrical, plumbing, um, try to check out the wiring. We're gonna really get into the, um, uh, the nuts and bolts of it quite a bit. Um, yeah, we really just try to, to help our folks, our clients, um, make a really fully informed decision, really try to educate them on the home before they purchase it, right? Absolutely. That's the name of the game. E educated buyers and sellers. That's what we like. So thanks so much for coming out today, Mike. Appreciate your time and expertise and uh, look forward to more energy efficiency videos in the future. Thank you. Have a great day.